What is up guys, this is Studio back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm going to be showing you the latest build of the Evolution X ROM based on Android 13 and this is the April 24th 2023 build, the latest one as of right now and if you have no idea how to flash this ROM you can check out the flashing guide from the description. In the about section this is how it looks like, we have the Evolution X logo up top, the Android version shows as Android 13, the Evolution X version shows as 7.8 CSIG for Rafael official build. The security patch here is latest of April 5th, 2023, so the latest one. If you scroll down more, we have the stock kernel as the 4.14, so we have star kernel. The build date here, April 24th, 2023 again. The build maintainer is Stalix and we have the SNX status showing as enforcing. In the system settings, we still have a system updater. From here, you can check for updates. And if you go into the gestures, we have the quick tap actions and these are the options that you can choose from. Let me go back, we have the quick open camera, system navigation gestures. In the settings of it, we have the advanced gestures and there are these many options for the long swipe actions. Let me go back, we have the pill length and the pill radius customization. The IME button space options are there, the default, narrow and the hidden option is there for that. We have the back gesture animation, the haptic feedback and the swipe to invoke assistant is also working fine. The back sensitivity is there, left edge, right edge customizations pretty much and we have the amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture. Two button and three button navigations are there as well. We have the one handed mode that actually works perfectly fine. Then we have the press and hold power button action. You can change it between power menu and the digital assistant. Then we have the swipe to screenshot. Here we have the shared edit, delete and the Google lens and even the capture mode feature. So you can choose from all of these. In the pop-up camera settings, we have the sound effects. You can choose it to disabled or there are the other options like the xylophone and stuff for the motorized front camera sounds. Let me show you the home screen. This is how it looks like and right now if you are wondering what has changed, well this is new that we still have the Evolution X launcher right out of the box over here which was removed earlier. Here in the misc settings we have the use taskbar, allow home screen rotation, background blur depth. Now in the suggestions you can of course disable the normal suggestions but in the recent panel we have the show memory info the background opacity, the screenshot, lens and the clear all option and even there is a newer option like shake phone to clear all tasks. Well this is new, I'll show you in the recent panel how it works and we have the app drawer, then the themed icons, app search bar, icon labels in drawer, row height and the background opacity you can customize, then we have the home screen layout, we have the lock layout, double tap to sleep and the wallpaper scrolling and zooming, at a glance, the series bar kind of interface and we have the themed icons, music search etc options. Let me go back in the icons, we have the icon pack, the notification dots and the icon size, font size and even the max lines for app level customization. Now here in the home screen we have the widgets, they are working fine, I have added this subscribe account widget and even the battery widget is working perfectly fine, just look at the animations, they are working fine and we have the clock widget animation and stuff and I have also connected to a bluetooth device so you can see both the phone's battery and the bluetooth device's battery right here and double tapping to sleep, yes that is working fine and screen of FOD is also working fine. By the way, I have customized the clock, that's why you are seeing this newer kind of clock over here. I'll show you the customization settings and stuff, but let me show you the recent panel again. And right now I have all the apps open and stuff. And right now if I just shake this, as you can see, all the apps has been cleared. So this is a new feature. And we also have the Google Lens and stuff right here. Let me show you the screenshot, the Google Lens and the clear all button appears here. And on the bottom, you will see the current RAM status of the device with the, all the apps opened in the background. The split top appears like this and there is the background blur. A really cool looking easter egg is that if you just go into the launcher settings and just shake the device, you will get this Evolution X logos right here in different colors. Looks so beautiful. Really cool looking easter egg, I would say. Let me show you the quick setting panel. This is how it looks like and I have customized it thoroughly and I have the lined kind of quick setting panel. But here, let me show you what toggles you will get. We have the Wi-Fi, mobile data, the Bluetooth toggle, flashlight, all those things are working fine, the Google Home controls and stuff. And the screen recorder has newer features like record entire screen or record a single app. Then we have the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time. Enable HEVC option is also there. We have the start recording and some tips right here, I guess. And we have the nearby shared, the data server, dark theme, night light, ambient display, the reboot toggle and stuff, anti picker or disrimming. FPS info looks beautiful like this, feels much more stable. But let me tell you right now, the display refresh rate cannot be overclocked more than 60 hertz. So earlier we had the 90 hertz, 72 hertz, and 102 hertz and stuff like that. But right now, the display is only clocked at 60 hertz because of stability reasons, I guess. 
and we have the heads up the live display and you can make the display to outdoor brights and mode and stuff with this but the only thing about the quick setting panel i would say is even in the light theme the quick setting panel stays dark this is what i do not like that much but yeah that's how it is and in the power menu we have the advanced reboot you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here and swiping up we'll get to the app drawer in the home screen or stock launcher and you can search for any particular app and of course swiping down we'll get you to the quick setting panel to the left of the home screen we get the google's discover page no issues with that now let me talk about the stock camera well you are getting the miui camera right out of the box still and we also have the lens switching option like the 0.66x lens is working fine 2x telephoto and the 1x option is also working and in the portrait mode of course in the like front camera settings the front camera selfies in portrait mode is actually working perfectly fine no issues there is a beautification mode and stuff all this and in the video settings let me actually go into it let me switch to the rear camera you can shoot up to 4k 60 fps video still with the rear camera no issues but there are newer features like the audio zoom and stuff i'm not really sure if that will work but except for that we have a teleprompter mode let me actually show you you can just play it so once you're shooting a video or something you can just enable this teleprompter mode to shoot videos by reading some kind of scripts you can definitely do that so there is a pausing option and you can also customize the text size and stuff all these things you can customize scrolling speed and stuff all these things you can customize so this is really great that we have all these features i don't know which smartphone offers these many features but yeah this miui camera does have it and in the pro mode as well we can shoot videos up to 4k 60 fps and with that you can control the white balance the focus the shutter speed and even the iso and stuff all these things can be customized the documents mode is there we have the enhanced mode right here if you want to use that and if you swipe up we have the vlog mode the vlog pro slow motion time lapse stick out of the earth, movie effects multicam all these modes right here so by default i would say this is one of the best features of this rom in my opinion because we are getting the miui camera right out of the box and it has so much features let me jump into the settings and show you the customizations but before that let me tell you if you want to skip this part you can definitely do that by swiping on the seek bar and do hit the beauty of thumbs up if you are enjoying it let me actually show you in the theme settings we have the normal theme style you have the tonal spot the vibrant expressive all these other options then we have the color source you can change it from right here we have the accent background and stuff you can customize that and we have the luminance the chroma factor and the tint background etc the dark theme is there and there's the black or the pitch black mode and stuff if you enable the dark mode and we have the lock screen clock fonts and i would say there are 100 plus options for the lock screen clock font just notice how many options are here and you can choose from multiple different options of the clocks and we have the custom lock screen clock font color then the clock format you can change to single line or double line then we have the headline and body fonts icon packs and the signal icon styles are there as well there are plethora of options for that then we have the wi-fi icon styles as well then we have the icon shapes you can choose from these many options even the app bar style you can customize that if you're using two or three button navigations in the status bar settings we have the status bar lyric the clock style you can put it to right left or center and we have thoro customization for that the clock style i mean then we have the network traffic indicator status bar logo and stuff and we have the battery styles i have been using it with the icon landscape right but you can of course change it and the battery percentage i have it on next to the icon and even we have the battery bar the status bar icons are right here for the headset bluetooth quality etc kind of icons then if we scroll down more we have the show wi-fi icon type and right now as you can see it shows the five over here that means it's connected to a five gigahertz network and we have the bluetooth battery stats my camera privacy indicator location privacy indicator and we have the media projection privacy etc let me go back in the notifications we have the heads up disabling and the customization option the reticker is right here then we have the kill app button blurred media artwork background and stuff then we have the notification light the battery light all these things the blink flashlight for incoming call is there and we have the blink flashlight for notification as well in call vibration options are right here in the quick settings we have the hide label label text and the column portrait and landscape options customization and we have the quick setting header image and we have the secure quick setting tiles for unlocking and stuff and we have the quick pull down as well you can customize the brightness editor you can change it on show always and the position to bottom if you want then we have the auto brightness icon if you scroll down more we have the vibrate on toggle touch clear all button and we have the button styles for the notifications in the power menu we have the disable power menu on lock screen then if you scroll down more we have the advanced reboot and all these other features let me go back in the gestures we have the click to click partial screenshot long press power button toggle torch and if you scroll down even more we have the double tap to sleep on the lock screen 
and status bar as well. Then we have the ambient wake gestures. Let me go into the lock screen. We have the UDFPS customization. In here, we have the always on fingerprint, UDFPS haptic, and the UDFPS icon picker, custom UDFPS icons, and we have the animations as well. And these are the animations that you will get pretty much similar to how it was earlier. And even the icon picker, let me show you. These are the icons you will get over here. Then we have the edge lighting, lock screen charging info. If you scroll down more, we have the media cover art and we have the blood amount for the media artwork and stuff, all these things. In the button section, we have the navigation bar, the system navigation buttons. Let me go back. We have the volume panel timeout. You can set it to up to 10 seconds and per app volume control is also there. We have the volume rocker wick. The volume steps are also there if you need it. In the animations, we have the charging animation, the screen of animation as well. Then we have the power menu animations. Let me go back in the misc settings. We have the game space and you can add any game that you are willing to. Let me go back. We have the smart pixels, then the launch music app on headset connect. The pulse option is also there. There is the gravity options and stuff. And we have the unlimited Google photo storage, the unlock added PC in games and the Netflix spoof. I would recommend you guys enabling this unlimited Google photo storage first if you really need the unlimited photo storage. And here we have the jitter, then the ignore window secure flags. If you scroll down more, we have the sensor block per package and the wake lock blocker, alarm blocker, and the USB configuration. You can set it to file transfer for convenience. So that's pretty much it about the customization settings. Right now, let me switch to the battery settings. And in here, this is how it looks like. Now, if you scroll down mode, we get to see the design battery capacity, the current battery capacity, the charging cycles, and the battery temperature as well. This you do not get in most ROMs, but you do get this option in this particular ROM and that's just awesome. We also have the sleep mode. You can enable it for some reason and we have the battery optimization per app. You can do that. Battery charge warning is also there. Then we have the smart charging as well. The trigger level and stuff you can customize in the adaptive preference and stuff. And talking about the battery, let me actually show you. I have tested it with the Aku battery app and with that, the battery life that I have been getting is amazing. It's more than eight hours. So that's an amazing amount of screen on time. Yes, this is estimated, but still I would say the battery life over here is amazing. Even the screen off, you can see it's about 11 days and the combined use it shows as about a week. So yeah, this is all estimated numbers, but still I would say the battery life here is amazing. But not to forget, this is the new battery that I have over here in the health section. Okay, so the battery health does not show up yet. But yeah, overall, it, this is a new battery that I have over here. I did replace the battery. With that, the battery life, I did not face any issues. And even the fast charging and stuff is working perfectly fine. In the sound and vibration settings, we have the media call ring, etc. volume controls. If we scroll down more, we have the do not disturb, the smart pause, and we have the vibration and haptics and the touch feedback and stuff you can customize. I did customize it a little bit and we have the per app volume control, dial patterns, in call notification and stuff. All these sounds you can disable if you don't like them. And we have the silent and medium mute feature. Then if you go back, we have the me sound enhancer. If you enable it, we have the presets and you can choose it to youth edition or something else. So the sound quality via the headphone jack and the Bluetooth headsets and stuff is amazing over here. Even we have this enable hi-fi option if you want to choose this and the haptic feedback and stuff, the vibration intensity of the whole UI you can customize and the clear speaker option is also there. By the way, the volume panel looks like this and you can expand and just change the volume output. So yeah, right now it's working perfectly fine. This is a new look, I would say pretty much. And once you're playing music, it also shows the per app volume. And in here, if I go into it, so yeah, this is how it looks. Looks beautiful pretty much, the volume panel with the like media output switching option. And in here, if I just play or pause, looks beautiful. And also I can switch the output device from right here. So this is great. In the display settings, we have the brightness level, the adaptive or auto brightness and the lock screen customization. In here, we have the shortcuts. You can change the left button or right button. You can just choose it from right here. I'll show you the lock screen later on. And we have the change wallpapers and the wallpaper colors and stuff. By the way, I have been using a wallp app and we have the dark theme, the themed icons and the app grid. We have up to six by 10 option right now. And we have the themed icons as, as well again. And we have the system icon packs, the system fonts, etc., for the wallpapers and styles. Always show time info is the always on display and we have the always on fingerprint that's for screen of FOD and in the advanced settings we do have the pickup option. I can enable it if you want to see it. Let me actually show you if I just double tap and just put the device on the desk and pick it up on my hand. The pickup gesture is actually working perfectly fine and the clock just definitely looks beautiful. Let me just tap the fingerprint scanner and it unlocks. We have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes and we have the pocket detection, the dark theme 
and also you can enable the pitch black mode from right here again if you scroll down mode we have the night light and the live display there is the outdoor bright sun mode anti-flicker reading mode color calibration rgb control is here let me go back we have the allow window level blurs the dc dimming and we have the screen protector mode as well the wake up on plug everything is here now it's time that i show you the security settings in here we also have the quick unlock let me actually go back and let me show you the thing with scanner speed and stuff again and in here with the like lock screen it unlocks perfectly fine and even with the screen of a 40 it unlocks fine now i'll do one thing let me just enable the always on display and here i'll just go into it and yeah with the always on display it looks beautiful and even with that it is unlocking perfectly fine and on the bottom you can see we are noticing the battery percentage right here and if i just tap the thing scanner so yeah it is unlocking fine and even from the lock screen if i go into it and just swipe up so yeah it is unlocking with the face unlock and let me show you one more time how is the speed so yeah it is unlocking perfectly fine right now if i show you the app lock this is how the ui looks and if i just tap the thing bit scanner as you can see the app has been unlocked so yeah app lock face unlock and the thing bit scanner is working perfectly fine no issues Talking about the basic stuff, yes, safety net passes right out of the box over here, so banking apps will not be an issue. And the Dino Info shows as L1 here, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. And after enabling the Google Photos Unlimited Backup, yes, you do get the options to actually backup the photos in unlimited storage like a pixel, so you do have this feature still. And if you're wondering about the overall performance and stuff, let me tell you the memory management right now has been awesome and even. The display is running at 60Hz because of stability reasons, earlier there was force closes and stuff sometimes with the high refresh rates but right now it is a much more stable experience, no issues whatsoever while switching apps and stuff like that. So yeah, overall it's a much better experience and if you want to look at the benchmarks, here are the Android 20 Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build of Evolution X ROM. I would say the overall stability right now has been one of the best so far. So let in the comments what do you guys think about the latest build of Evolution XROM based on Android 13 and this is a 24th April 2023 build on the Redmi K20 Pro. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments about it. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Please share this video out with your friends if you want them to know about the latest build of Evolution XROM on the Redmi K20 Pro. This is Cheeto from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.